Hey, the last video timed out on me a little bit there, but I was trying to get at the end there um, that, you know, if you make the confidence interval less by 80%, okay, uh, what happens is that you get a smaller confidence interval, you know, and you have a smaller margin of error, but you tend to miss the true population parameter quite often. On the other hand, if you go with a very high confidence interval, you can see as I increase the confidence interval, we're getting a, you know wider intervals. We're more likely to capture uh, the true. So here at 99.5% confident means if I repeat this same process for a sample size of 20 and construct many confidence intervals, 99.5% of the time, uh, or 99.5 percent of my intervals will capture the true parameter however we do have very wide intervals so maybe that's not making a very strong statement about where the true uh, mean might fall okay so um, we'll look more at what affects the length of the uh, interval uh, because there are other factors uh, we'll look at that uh, in a bit but <clears throat> let's continue on here All right so uh, the interpretation of the confidence level would be to say if we were to select many random samples from a population and construct a c percent confidence interval using each sample about c percent of the intervals would capture the true population parameter, which you would put in context. So, in this case, if I had a 95% uh, confidence interval, I would just replace C with 95% each time and add some context, and I would be interpreting the confidence level of 95%. Okay, there's a check your understanding here uh, to make sure we understand everything. Uh, and so far, and then, and then the next video will be the last one for uh, this lesson, and it will be about uh, what affects the margin of error, how you can decrease the margin of error, and we'll learn what a critical value is. But uh, so far, you should be able to answer some questions like this one, these questions coming up based on this context right here. So the Pew Research Center and the Smithsonian Magazine recently quizzed a random sample of 1,006 U.S. adults on their knowledge of science. One of the questions asked, which gas makes up most of Earth's atmosphere? Hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, or oxygen? So four choices. If people were just guessing, some of them would get it right. You know, we would expect 25% of the time somebody could get the question right by guessing. Now, a 95% interval for the proportion who would correct the answer nitrogen is only from 0.175 to 0.225. Terrible, right? Uh, apparently, people do not know this. And this the answer to this question well um, so here's our confidence interval and it's a 95% confidence interval and we're going to interpret the confidence interval and we're going to interpret the confidence level and we'll calculate a point estimate what in the margin of error based on the, what we're given as uh, you might want to write down here uh, the numbers 0.175 comma 0.225 and then you can put those in parentheses that's your confidence interval and it's 95 percent so then uh, from that you can get your point estimate and your margin there and then one more question if people guess one of the four choices at random about 25 percent should get it correct as I was saying and does this interval provide convincing evidence that less than 25% of U.S. adults would answer the question 
correctly. Like, is there evidence that less than what you would expect if they were guessing, get it correct? All right, you gotta explain your reasoning. So, first question was, um, we are nine, or the, the first uh, answer to the first question here, interpret the confidence interval. Okay, we just fill in the blanks. We put the confidence level here. We are 95% confident that the interval from 0.175 to 0.225 captures the true proportion of U.S. adults who would answer the question correctly. All right, context at the end. Okay, so this is just the form you can use every time. Just change the numbers and change the context as needed to interpret the confidence interval. Now, to inter interpret the confidence level, like, that's to say, what does the 95% mean? So that means, oops, what happened here? Oh, I have these backwards. Okay, so this is the answer to number two, right? It was interpret the confidence uh, level. So <clears throat> this should say number two. If we were to select many random samples of U.S. adults and construct a 95% confidence interval using each sample, so if we follow this process over and over many, many, many times, about 95% of those confidence intervals that we build would capture the true proportion of U.S. adults. So the true proportion of U.S. adults is the parameter of interest. And sometimes we'd have a red bar, right? We would miss, you know, it was red on the app. We would miss the true proportion, but only about 5% of the time, 95% of our intervals should capture the true proportion in the long run if we do this many, 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 many times. All right, now back to the answer to, uh, this is ever the answer to number three. All right, so the point estimate, you got you got to find, oh, that should be a five, not a three, sorry. Uh, so you got to average out 0.175 and 0.225. So add them, divide by two, and right in the middle of that is 0 0.200. Looks that. Three. And we'll make that a two. I'll swap those two around. There we go. Now we have answers in the correct order. All right. And then that last question, you know, because 0.25 is not actually in the confidence interval. Right? The confidence interval only went up to 0.225, right? 0.175 to 0.225. 25% wasn't in it. So 25% uh, is not a plausible value. All the plausible values are less than 25%. So all the plausible values in the 95% confidence intervals are less than the proportion expected if people were simply to guess from the four choices. Therefore, this interval does provide convincing evidence that less than 25% of all adults would answer this question correctly. All right, so more to come uh, later. Uh, the next video, again, will be about uh, how, what affects the margin of error. Uh, so we've already looked at the confidence level is going to uh, affect the margin of error. And we need to talk about what a creepy value is. And then when we get to sections 8.2 and 8.3 and one section, we'll be more specifically constructing uh, confidence intervals for uh, proportions, okay, for a proportion of, of that is a parameter from uh, the population. And then section 8.3 will be more specifically geared toward the sample mean as an estimate of the true parameter and building a confidence interval around the sample mean.